All right, what's going on guys? Uh, welcome back to the Evans Garage. Uh, today I'm gonna to show you how to install this uh, Renogy battery monitor. Part number on it is RBM500. In the kit, you get instruction manual, the battery monitor itself, wire harness that goes from the back of it um, over to the battery shunt. The battery shunt comes with a plastic casing. You mount it, mount it somewhere. Um, from here, you go from this piece here, which is labeled as B positive. You run the, this red wire over to the positive terminal of the battery. One of these, P minus, runs from the uh, DC source in the camper. And then the B minus goes to the negative terminal of the battery. So I'll show you how to hook this up and then I'll show you how to uh, make this uh, work properly. Okay, so we're here with my 1986 Bigfoot camper. I'm just in the battery compartment here. These two wires, someone's wired up um, for the neg negative and positive terminal of the battery. My battery sits right here. Um, I can place the negative terminal or the positive terminal, whichever direction I want. I'm gonna place the battery shunt, I've decided, just back here. And then one terminal is going to go to the existing wire and then the other terminal is going to go to the negative terminal on the battery. The stud on the shunt is uh, quite large compared to the existing um, terminal on the battery. So I've got this marine grade um, heat shrink terminal set. I'm just going to bump up the size on the existing wire that runs into the camper. And then I have to make a jumper wire that goes from the shunt to the negative terminal of the battery. So I'll make a jumper wire. I've got some 10 gauge wire that I'm going to wire up as a jumper wire from the shunt to the battery. All right, so I've got the battery in here. I've got it hooked up. My solar charge controller is hooked up to the um, studs. And then on the threaded uh, studs is the factory, or not the factory, but the um, camper DC positive and negative. I have the a B negative going from the shunt to the negative terminal of the battery, and then the P minus going to the uh, DC side of the camper. And so at this point now, I'll plug in the positive uh, red wire that they gave me to the B positive over to the positive terminal of the battery here. Um, and then I can go ahead and plug in that harness they gave me and run it up to the uh, battery monitor. So I've run the uh, positive wire from the B positive on the shunt over to the positive terminal of the battery. And I've also won the, run the harness that they gave me that goes up to the battery monitor. I just drilled a hole up into the fridge compartment here. Took out the door for the fridge compartment and I'm gonna run it. I'll tidy up all the wiring after. Uh, but I'm gonna go inside the camper now, pick a good spot to mount it drill through um, into the fridge compartment and then run uh, my wiring once I have the monitor mounted. So just inside the camper here now, uh, what I've done is I've taken my battery monitor, traced the outside on the inner edge. Um, there's kind of a lip on it. I'll show you here. So it, it, it kind of clicks into place with these tabs. So I traced the inner edge, so this back side of where I wanted it. And now what I'm gonna do is drill the corners and then I'll take this uh, jigsaw here with this type of blade on it and then I'll cut open the hole and ho hopefully it's uh, accessible from the fridge side. Okay so from what I can tell I, I didn't hit any snags when I drilled those holes so I'll take the jigsaw now um, cut out kind of inside the line here just to give myself a bit of play and uh, we'll see if the battery monitor fits in there. Okay so I've got the hole cut out it's a bit of a mess I have to clean up but uh, I'll throw in the battery monitor there. Um, it's press fit now. All right, so not quite happy with the fitment here. Uh, what happened was the top of that um, piece of flooring chipped off when I, uh, when I was cutting the hole. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a uh, outlet cover. I just compared the size. Grab this outlet cover um, from Lowe's or something that's black maybe. And then I'll cut it with a sharp knife and uh, kind of just use it as a trim piece uh, for the press fit as it goes in and uh, we'll see how that looks for trim around that. Um, not really the best design from Renogy there for the press fitment because they don't give you much room for play uh, to mess up when you do your cut. Alright so we've got the battery monitor hooked up here but it needs to be calibrated. 
I have a uh, 120 amp hour battery and as you can see here it states 100 amp hour so we need to calibrate it to the battery that you have installed. Hold down the OK button for about three seconds. Here you can set the capacity, the high and low voltage uh, alarms and then uh, and then once you're out of this menu, you can calibrate the uh, battery to what you've set. So here I'm going to set it. I'll hit, uh, I'll hit OK. And then I need to hit OK again here to get the next line. Next line, 120 is what I have. And then we'll hit OK again, uh, back out of that. And then I'm going to leave the high and low for now. And we'll just back out of this menu. And then to calibrate it to the battery, Hold it, your battery has to be 100% charged, and then you calibrate it by holding the up arrow. And then there you go, your 120 amp battery, 120 amp hour battery is calibrated as long as your battery's been fully charged. And now it uh, should work depending on loads that you have uh, on and off. So if I turn on my fan here, I'll show you the, it'll show you the draw and how long you can have that draw with the existing battery condition. Okay, so I just want to run you through the high and low voltage and the alarm settings. So the high voltage setting. Uh, what happens here is when you reach that, when the voltage is higher than the set value, the capacity will automatically be set to 100%. That's my low voltage cutoff. So what happens there is when the voltage is lower than the set value, the capacity will automatically be set to zero. And if the discharge continues, the voltage value will flash and the alarm will beep once every 10 seconds. And then for the alarm settings, so this bottom one here, um, when the battery capacity is below the set capacity, the percentage and battery symbol will flash and the alarm will beep once every 10 seconds. Okay, so I want to show you one thing here now um, when it has a load on it um, it'll tell you the uh, watts that it draws, the amps that it draws, the voltage state that your battery is at and how long you can um, take that draw uh, sorry the the wattage draw at whatever you're drawing that's the duration that your battery is going to be able to hold it so we'll turn these lights on for example this is just a let me turn both on um, LED light there you can see it draws about 8 watts and um, maybe points, it's 0.63 amps and at this it's sort of it's calculating the amount of time that, that, can, that the battery can sustain that load um, if you had just that load uh, for the duration of you know the state of charge from your battery. So I'm going to go ahead and turn, I'm going to turn all my lights on. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 um, LED lights. And then I'm going to turn my range hood fan and LED light on. We'll see what it's. We'll see what it shows. Okay, so I just turned all four lights on: my range hood light and my range hood fan. Here you can see the uh, draw is about four amps. Um, my battery sitting at about 12.6 volts. It shows 119 amp hours, and it's about 50 watts of draw from all those uh, appliances. I guess you could call them. And uh, if I were to leave them all on like this, the battery still, or the uh, battery monitor is still calculating, but looks like I could do it for about 30 hours. So there you, there you see my uh, battery monitor, um, the voltage alarm went off. So I think, um, I think I'll have to adjust my, um, my low alarm at least uh, to something that's a bit lower because uh, the voltage drops. Uh, when my uh, appliances are on. Okay, in order to get this uh, trim piece to fit, uh, what I used was this uh, screwless outlet cover. Kind of had this back piece and then this front piece. And I uh, cut out with a sharp knife just the plastic so that way the battery monitor was press fit into here. And what I'm hoping is I can just press fit it into the camper and it'll stay put. So I'll go ahead and throw this in there and uh, we'll see how the fitment looks. Okay, the press fit and the camper didn't work, so I'm going to take this um, backing piece for this two-piece outlet cover. I'm going to also cut it out. Uh, these screws aren't going to work, and I'm going to have to, what I'll do is I'll screw this into the camper wall, and then I'll be able to clip that on there and have it uh, have it trimmed out correctly. All right, here's what I did to mount um, the trimmed out bezel. You can see the backing plate. I've used stainless screws for the opening. And then now I can take this guy and it just clips right on like that. And it's nice and firm, not going to go anywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to run through my settings here one more time. Um, the capacity of the battery is 120 amp hours. I've set my high voltage alarm, which um, resets the battery monitor to 100% state of charge 
once it hits 14 volts. And this uh, low voltage is um, when it hits that amount, it sets your battery monitor to 0% state of charge. So I'm gonna leave that 11, at 11.5 11 volts and we'll see how that works. And then uh, the alarm, um, I'm putting at 50% state of charge since this is a lead acid battery. So 50% state of charge for me is 60 amp hours because it's a 120 amp hour battery. So I'll leave that at 60 amp hours. And then we'll hit the double back. And here you can see 100% um, state of charge, 119 amp hours since I had it left on overnight. Um, just note this doesn't draw much power at all. Here I'll go ahead and turn a light on. And you can see that LED draws about 8 watts. And then turn it off and back to no draw. Okay, and I've just cleaned up my wiring. Got a zip tied down. Comes down here. This wire is zip tied out of the way. Onto the wing nut. And then I just cleaned up um, the charge controller wiring. All right, so that uh, wraps up this uh, Renogy battery monitor install. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for the next one.